All right. So again, today we are uh, all here for the Early Data Analyzer uh, 1.3 uh, Features and Modifications webinar um, that uh, for the release that just came out uh, probably maybe a week and a half ago. Um, on the phone with me, I have uh, Elena Gama. She's a sales support consultant. She will be taking and answering any of the questions throughout the webinar. And uh, my name is Chad Powell. I am also a sales support consultant. So feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Um, and she can stop me if need be, or we can save the questions until the end. Um, the, the preference is either way. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started here. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cover uh, just, just a quick PowerPoint, kind of some of the stuff that we are going to cover today. Uh, we've added uh, many features for the analysis and processing for the import. Um, we've added a 64-bit client um, portion of it. Archive um, expansion for ZipX files, end case from forensic image files for um, logical, not physical um, EON um, end case files. Um, the ability to choose folders, include, exclude. Um, we've got some NIST filtering. I'm sorry, some filters for NIST can be applied after the analysis for cases. Um, we can also um, uh, import it directly into SQL, and um, we've got the filter definitions to include um, a, a include exclude or include exclude or a not decided uh, function within there and I'll touch on those we do have some uh, specification for uh, deduplication for custodian precedence which one comes first which one comes second and so on and so forth um, searching we've added the megabit size for the family not just the file itself but the family in general um, different session labels in there some different uh, some additional options within the reports so you can scope those search reports down by custodian search term. Um, add, we actually added a uniqueness or a, a unique count uh, and size to the search report, so we'll touch on those as well. The ability to reanalyze documents that are in the exceptions tab. Uh, we can actually export, and this is a big one, we can export out to any EDRM, XML, uh, or a, a, a DAT load file in addition to going directly to uh, law pre-discovery. And you can also handle multiple export sets, so you can, you can save the different settings uh, across multiple, essentially a profile, if you may, for the export. And we also have a web interface aspect, and I'll touch on that as well um, as we progress. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up Early Data Analyzer. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to strictly hand, um, bounce onto just the features themselves. I'm not going to do anything um, major outside of that. So I just want to go ahead and make sure I touch on as much as possible uh, to give you as much information as, as, as available. So uh, <clears throat> what we have here in, in our, our um, the dashboard view, and this is what you're going to see for any of the processing after you've done any of the analysis aspect of it. You can also see that we have forensic images. Um, you don't see it. I do have a forensic image, uh, two actually forensic images that I did process. Um, <clears throat> But you are seeing that uh, I do have some forensic image attachments, meaning these are the emails and attachments, um, any other files that are associated with that. So you can see that those are listed in here. In addition to that, you are able to bring those in, and they are recognizable as a mail store. So all you have to do is, here's a mail store, boom, drop that in there, process it, and we'll write, read that as an, um, a logical end case file. Okay. And you'll also be able to launch the um, Native files, as you would any other time, uh, within as an eDoc or an email or anything to that effect. But we will go ahead and allow you to launch those directly within the app, within the application. Okay, uh, you are able to. Uh, the next one was a 64-bit EDA client. So now, if I was to go ahead and launch my <clears throat> um, task manager here, you're going to see a lot of um, Star 32 um, processes or image names if you may, indicating that that is a 32-bit process. So if we scroll down to Early Data Analyzer, you can see that that does not have a 32-bit executable or star 32 there. So however, if I was to go ahead and um, come back out to the installation directory, oops, installation directory, you're going to see a few different things here. So during the installation, law is smart enough to, the installation is smart enough to recognize whether or not you do have a, a 64-bit client um, that you're installing. Um, uh, law and EDA, or sorry, just EDA on. So what we'll do is we'll actually throw in a EDA executable 
in an EVA analyzer, EV analyzer 64-bit folder. Therefore, you can launch it directly from here. Or you can come through and say, OK, I always want to launch it from the normal 32-bit, which if I was to close out and launch it from a regular early data analyzer folder, you're going to see that it now it has a 32-bit or a star 32 in there, indicating that it is a 32-bit client. So that's a simple, very, very simple way to indicate that those are 32-bit um, versus a 64-bit. Um, the nice thing what we do is that we do have the ability to <clears throat> put either the 64-bit or the 32-bit on your system automatically after the installation. So um, after my installation, all it did is it threw a 64-bit client on there, so I didn't have to go back in and identify which is which. So we do have that ability, and it's done automatically for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we have here, um, back over here to my dashboard, that was the second feature. For The next one would be your uh, ZipX um, archive expansions. So what you'll see here is I do have a ZipX file here. Um, you can see that, it, that I labeled my session that way, um, and it is an archive. Um, probably you're wondering, how do I know that, that it is truly a ZipX um, extension? So if I come out here, and I want to come out to, and I know there's several PDFs in there, and I know this was a specific file that was contained within there. And in order, in order to identify that, you can see that there is the ZipX extension, and we are able to expand those out into that parent-child relationship. Um, the next feature would be to um, specify specific services that would be performed on multiple machines. So as you can see, I have several machines set up here. I've got um, a Windows 8 test machine. Uh, I have a uh, Windows 7 test machine as well as a Windows XP. These are all primarily VMs. These three um, are VMs right here, and this is a physical machine. So uh, if I wanted to specify only having the OCR happening, happening on a very specific machine, I can go ahead and say OCR is going to be handled on that machine where as I don't have maybe say Abby on my local station here, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck OCR from here and now since I do have Abby maybe on this machine as well as this uh, VM here, that OCR will take place on just those online machines that have Abby installed. Okay. That's, a, that's a, just one instance of the reasoning for separating the different, pro, the, the different um, processes there. The other reason would be is that, say, you've got a, a really robust machine that you want um, indexing to occur on or you want analysis to occur on. You can specify those processes accordingly. Okay. Let me go ahead and just check these back again. And OCR was in here. So that's, one, that's uh, a big feature within there. Uh, the next one, this is a really, really nice one. Is let's say, for instance, I'm going to come out here and I'm just going to use this as, a, as an example. Um, I've already brought this data in, but I'm going to go ahead and just group these folders and drop them in here as one simple um, folder here, custodian, actually. Um, I've done that wrong, so let me see what we got here. All right. So I've got my EDA demo set up here. I'm going to just drop it right in here. I'm going to grab everything within there. So I'm not really going down and saying, okay, oh, I want maybe this one or this one or that one. What we can do directly within here is we can specify it within EDA for very, um, a set folder of selection. So maybe, for instance, I don't need this one or this one or this one. Or maybe I don't need any of these, for instance. And then click OK. And now I would actually be uh, processing they're analyzing just those very specific um, <clears throat> folders that have made, been made that, on that selection. Okay. The, the, the caveat here is that once the analysis has begun, these cannot be undone. Okay. So if you've processed these and you've analyzed them, um, you will not be able to go back and uncheck these. This is just letting you know that, hey, these were the ones that were analyzed. If you need to go ahead and, and, and reanalyze the ones that were unselected, you would have to add those separately or outside of um, that custodian if you wanted to, or you can just drop and drag them directly within this drag folder, files and folder section here. Okay. Um, we are able to customize the um, 
the, the session labels for the import screen. So you can say, I've got, you know, here's my NCASE forensic images. Um, I've got my ZipX session, my Enron session. I also have the one that I just imported. So if I want to go ahead and delete this one, <coughs> I still have those here. And the other thing we can do is, let's say, I want to go ahead, you know, I want to search just on my custodian of Enron. Or it's not, that's for my custodians. But if I wanted to go ahead and make Townsend. Oops, I don't have that one in here. Oh, that's right. That would make sense. So Panis. So there, uh, there's Panis right here. So you can search on your specific custodians if you want to. Okay. Now, if you wanted to add additional data to a specific session, so let's say, for instance, this Enron session, I can go ahead and drop that in here, and, and it would be labeled with that session. The nice thing about that is that during the searching, you do have the ability to sp specify each session that you want to search on if you want to. Okay. And I'll touch on that later on as we go. Uh, the next one would be within your case settings. Uh, <clears throat> now, in our indexer option in here, we have uh, the option to specify maximum number of threads to use for your indexing and searching. Okay, now keep in, uh, this is worded a little funny. Um, it should be maximum number of index threads, not workers, because they are technically not going to be um, set up as um, agents or workers like analysis, this is just the number of threads. So if I have my indexing, if I, all I want to do is maybe use two, two um, threads versus my quad core that I have versus four threads that I have available, I can specify that so only two index threads are being used for two or maybe all four or zero meaning unlimited or it, there's no limit for what you have based upon your system um, that will use whatever is available. I hope that made sense. I'm going to click on cancel there. Let's see what this blacklist is all about here. Um, oh, that would make that makes sense. I really don't need that in there. Um, <clears throat> so at this time, what I'll do is I'll, let me go ahead and stop. Uh, I did cover a lot a lot of features um, within there just uh, in a short amount of time. So Elaine, are there any questions? There aren't any questions right now. Tom. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm mostly doing something right. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and let her know, and she'll stop me as we need to go along. <clears throat> All right. So in our import section here, so you can see that if you're familiar with EVA, it has changed a little mm -hmm. bit, but not a whole lot. Okay. <clears throat> in our file hash what we have here, we do have the, the existing custom file hash filter. Um, this just allows you to import either a folder um, that you want to run a hash against, and then run your um, you want to create a hash based upon a specific folder or corporate image, and then um, run that hash against existing uh, data that's in there. You can do that, or you can actually import it from an existing file, um, and that will allow you to do that too. So I'm going to click on cancel because I don't want to run into that. So our NIST filtering. What's nice about this is, give me a second. I haven't opened up uh, the NIST items yet, but I kind of give it you get an example of what's going on. The very first time you open it up in a case, it does take a moment or two because it's uh, kind of it's looking in SQL to see if you've um, run the NIST import or you actually um, run the, uh, uh, the NIST database against the, um, a specific case. So what I have already done is that I've already imported uh, the NIST database from the NSRL website, um, which we actually give you a link to directly within here. So uh, where, where do I get the NIST list? Okay, or NIST zip file. Boom. Click on that. It takes you directly out to where you need to go. Okay, and it just says, okay, this, is, this would take you directly to the reduce set, and this is generally going to be the one you're going to use. It's a minimal set, and we give you that indication right here, minimal set end gate. Okay? And then once you do that, point to that exact zip file. No need to unzip it or anything. We do that for you. Point to the zip file, click start, or yeah, click on start, and that's going to load it directly into SQL, and then you can run your denisting at the time of each case on it immediately. So you can see now if I click on it again, it's going to pop up pretty easily since it was actually looking to find when it was last loaded on, when it was uh, um, misfit against and such. Okay, And the reason why we've done it this way is that um, it, it, you can keep up with the NSRL um, database a lot easier with their zip file opposed to us having to create that zip file as we do for law. Okay, um, The idea down the road with law pre-discovery is to kind of work the same manner, um, but right now we don't have that same uh, manner um, that we're running it on in, within law. Okay. Um, like I had mentioned before, the NIST filter, 
is all SQL-based. So um, we just pull it from that um, NSRL site based upon your download. And I'll go ahead and show you what it, what it imports it out as. Bear with me. Opening SQL so you guys can see what we're doing here. <clears throat> so within SQL itself, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my databases here. We do have an, it's called an EDA NIST. Okay? No need to go into it any further, um, adding you know, hashes or anything like that um, within the NSRL uh, filter because you can get that directly from the NSRL website. Okay? <clears throat> Moving on to the, let's, say, let's just use a filter. Um, file type filter, for example, you now have the ability to include or exclude all, all of them. Uh, but the nice thing here is that we have not decided. Okay, w What's not decided, probably you're wondering. So what we can do is, let's say I'm going to go ahead and include everything. Well, let's say, for instance, I've not truly made a decision on any of these yet. Okay, And actually, hold on just a second here. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm going to take this machine offline here. Sorry about that. It's it's uh, it is uh, looking to run that service on that machine, but I, I really don't want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that offline here real quick. So what we're doing here is that, let's say, for instance, you've added data into your case. Okay? Um, you've had it analyzed. Everything looks good on it. So now you want to go ahead and um, add it, um, find out what has not been decided on. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and exclude these. I'm um, we'll come down here and exclude these as well. Let's just throw that out as an example. So now you want to find out, okay, what's not been decided on in here? Boom. Click on Not Decided, and it takes you exactly to those file types that still need a decision. Okay. Now keep in mind, though, that we are not going to leave the undecided um, documents behind. We're actually going to take them to the next stage. Uh, we we, we want to be overly inclusive versus um, just what you've um, made the decision on of being included. Uh, so if you're unsure about it and you've decided, oh, I don't know yet, and you've ran your exports, you're going to get those regardless because we want to make sure you get the most information even though you've not made a decision on it. So that way in the review app, um, whether it be concordance, whether it be um, concordance EV, relativity, or what have you, that allows you to take those there and make a decision after you've run your analysis. Okay. <clears throat> we'll go back to all. Um, let me go ahead and just make sure I've got uh, just quick yes here. <clears throat> okay. So that's um, uh, the filters aspect of it. Now hopping into the deduplication filter. Um, it shows you that I've got 106 um, count in here. Uh, let me make a note of what we have here for our duplicates. Um, I've got no duplicates in here. Uh, bear with me. I'm just going to find a. Okay, so Brett Bert Myers has uh, 25 duplicates. So if we come over to here and and we can change our precedence here. Okay, um, we can go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put Bert Myers at the top move that one up as well and click Save. So I'm just reordering the priority list for this custodian. So I'm, I, I want to run Burt Myers as having the primary um, record where each additional duplicate would therefore be identified in each of those uh, custodians um, as needed. Okay. So what's going to happen now after I... Uh, it's got to rerun its filtering just to make sure, or rerun the deduplication just to make sure that it's correct there. So we have here, so if I come back in here, um, <clears throat> it should rerun, it should maybe even run the deduplication already. So now if we come back, uh, Bert Myers now has zero duplicates versus 25 is what he, previous, he or she previously had. Okay. So I hope that makes sense as far as the deduplication is concerned. Okay. There's no real huge report to run on to get that information out. All it, just, all it is is just allowing you to rerun the deduplication 
um, reprioritize essentially. Okay. <clears throat> now your searching functions in here. I'm just going to go ahead and import a list. That would be correct. Click on open. That's going to bring in my nine search terms. Nothing crazy. I'll click on run searches. Now while this is running, which is also going to be in the service, and you'll see that here, you do see the size in megabytes. Okay. That is the entire family for those. Um, for the, the search term itself. So, 200, so technologies had 200, um, seven, almost 7,400 um, total count, but it also yielded 217, almost 218 total megabyte in size. Okay, and that also takes into account the family count. Okay, so that takes into account of these additional files within here. Okay, and you also notice that um, as you further progress, we are not showing in EVA any longer um, PST files, um, archive files, and case uh, image files, um, the EO1 files, uh, RAR files, that kind of thing. We're not showing those directly within EVA any longer. So within our file type filter, we previously used to list um, zips or RARs or um, Microsoft PST files. They, they are no longer being shown in here just because that they were being um, the, the, the values were being yielded incorrectly so we've identified that we've changed it and we, we've rectified that so it shows off a little bit a little bit better for you okay we also have the guided search functions in here uh, this allows you just to um, see the custodians breaks it down pretty easy um, in here uh, you can also search on just your import session so this specific import session had 695 records this side has almost 6,700 within here. And you can see we still do the hit highlighting in here, and so on and so forth. But we do see those within here um, because that is in the import session. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, if we hop into the field, we do have the import session here. Okay. This allows you to search on that import session. All right. Um, <clears throat> Are there any questions at this juncture? I just want to make sure that we're covering everything appropriately. There is one question. Can you run right. a search on a non-alphanumeric character? For instance, is there a specific character you have in mind? Are you talking an at symbol or one of these symbols? <laughs> is that what you're getting at? If that, uh, let me know if I'm, I'm understanding that correctly. Ampersand and a percentage symbol okay. or anything. Okay. So basically what that's, what those are going to be considered as um, noise words. Okay. We're using the noise dat, dat file directly within that noise dot dat. Um, uh, I believe it was, yes, it's this one here. Okay. The, the, Looks like it's one of these two files we're using. I believe it is the default.abc file. Um, these are going to be considered spaces. All of these special characters are going to be considered spaces. Now, for any reason, you want to remove these, and maybe it's the pound symbol you want to search upon. Remove it, save it, and then rerun your search. My suggestion is to back up this default.abc file and any of the file, other files that you do make a change to and then rerun your index and rerun your search. That way um, you do get your appropriate search function. So I, since if I was to make a change to that specific file, I would have to come into here and say, okay, I want to go ahead and rebuild my selected index. It's going to run, it's going to do its thing, and then rerun my searches after the index is complete to get the accurate results. And we still have the stemming, phonic, fuzzy, boolean, all the, all the usual search options within here. Okay. Um, are there any other questions, Elaine? Um, there is one additional question. When the custodian priority of dedupe was changed, is there a specific button to make it recalculate the values? Or is it as simple as clicking on and off of of a top tab. Okay. So as soon as you click the save button, that's when it sets. Okay. So if I real prioritize Bert had zero, originally I had 25. So if I move Susan up, click on save, immediately I can come back over here to Bert. 
and see if he has anything. It looks like we are running. Uh, it looks like it's going to run its deduplication again down here at the bottom. So it's pending. So bear with it. So it's all done. So now you can see that I've got four records versus zero as previously done. So as soon as clicking that save button for the reprioritization, re you're going to see that it does take effect. Thank you, Chad. And there's another one that just came in. Does this search support Unicode text such as Chinese or Japanese? It does. Yes, it does. Uh, you will have to type in that Unicode text. We do not translate from English or from Unicode to English or vice versa. You have to type in that text. So you can see that I made a change to the, uh, the, pre -prior, or the, the, the prioritization of the um, custodian. So now I have, I mean, we're seeing that these are hate, these are out of date. So I need to go ahead and rerun my searches to see if those changed. If they, if they changed, if I for some reason unchecked a specific custodian, um, or not unchecked custodian, but reprioritized re it, unchecked a specific filter, or anything, these are just going to show you that they are out of date. So we've got three different states. Okay. The different states are, let's just throw up here, uh, um, uh, I just did it again, well, quick save. The sun, the sunburst is new. Exclamation point, yellow exclamation point is indicating that it needs to be rerun or they're out of date. And green indicates that, hey, this has been complete. This is the last time it was run on. I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I don't need that search. In there, so I'm going to go ahead and remove, oops, I did that. <laughs> nice. Let me re-import my searches here real quick. Uh, run searches. Okay, the reason why I deleted them all because I had them all checked. <laughs> so bear with it here just a moment. So we'll go ahead and hop into the reports. You're going to see that it's just going to do its work pending down here, and, and it's going to complete what it needs to do. Okay, now onto the reports. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of these reports are remain pretty much the same. Uh, Exception report, nothing's truly changed within there. Um, it still lists the exact same thing it did before with the exceptions. Um, and you'll see that render up here in just a moment. Nothing crazy within here. What has changed is your search report. <clears throat> okay, we have the ability to show very specific custodians within here. So if I want to go ahead and choose a specific custodian to, to show, let me go ahead and show you what all of them look like. Okay, we're going to go ahead and create that report based upon the search. Okay, we've got our search term, search results uh, by term. You can list the count, total size. This is the family count, and this is the unique hits. Okay, this is the uniqueness for this specific term. Okay, now if I was to uncheck the so, show result, results by term section, recreate that, you're going to see that now I, that, that section is gone. Uncheck this one. The next one's gone, and so on and so forth. You can see what where, where I'm going with all of this. You can also in, include the ones that have no um, no results. So um, looks like I do have results for all of them. So if I was to uncheck this, it would yield absolutely nothing. Okay, with the exception of right here. Okay, so term on the 6.3 docs. So if I go ahead and create, so now all I have is technologies, whereas before I had the additional items in there with zero con with zero. Um, results. Okay, uh, that is one, the options there. So if you want to go ahead and specify, okay, just show me the custodians for those four. Rerun it. Here's my four that I selected. Here's the custodians by with search terms and no items are are um, displayed with zero results. And you can also display a very specific term if you want to. So if you don't really care about them all. All you want is, let's say, technologies. Boom. All you're going to get is technologies for each of those terms. Custodians within the terms, custodians, and the term itself. So you got, you, you've gained a lot of control with what you're trying to review um, for that specific um, data set. So you can see what data you want. You can search on, or you can display specific terms, specific custodians, that kind of stuff. Um, so we've given you a little bit more control on what to view in here. Um, I know a lot of you probably are saying, well, I don't have enough control um, as far as creating your own customizable reports. But bear with us. We are, uh, it's, it's, in the, it's in the backlog for a feature request to create customizable reports. So I don't have an uh, idea of when that's coming, but it is on our, on our radar of a feature. Um, 
Other than that, that is the search report section. Um, any questions on that? I don't see any questions right now. Charlie. Perfect. All right. So this has been a big request as far as, um, let's say, encrypted files is concerned. Or um, uh, most commonly, I would assume it would be encrypted files they would be using this for. Um, I'm not sure why it would be you know, any of the other options in here. But nonetheless, you do have it available. You do have an encrypted file within here. Let's see, I'm not sure what's going on with this one. Looks like there's an, an, an encrypted archive within there. So let's say, for instance, you go ahead and you know you grab your you, you come into your case settings, you put the password in there, and you do your thing there. Now instead of you know selecting, let's say for instance, you've got all these in here, you want to you don't want to say okay, I don't want to reanalyze, 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 click them all, boom, click that button here. It reanalyzes all eligible items in the current view. Okay. So if you click Reanalyze and you're on the empty content, it's going to get whatever's in the empty content. Now, if you select All, it's not available because we want to make sure that you are well aware that you want to do a specific section. Okay. And it lets you know that it, this process can take a long time depending on the size of the case as well as the number of exceptions that are in there that you're trying to reanalyze. Okay. Um, the next one would be the export. This is going to be a big one, so I hope everybody's prepared for it. Okay, here it is. Okay, create a new export. We can create a law per discovery export, or we can create a native export. I'm going to just go ahead, and I know um, this is going to be boring for some of you. I'm just going to create a law export. I've named it. You can name it whatever you want. It can be an alphanumeric. It can be you know, just a basic one like that. Create a law. Now it's going to come through. And it's going to create that profile within there. And in order to see that, you can come into here. And here it is. This is the one we're specifically chosen on. Okay? You can create another one in here. Let's say I want to go ahead and create a, um, let's see, EDRM. Okay? I want to throw that one in there. Let's say I want to create another one called DAT. Um, let's say I want to call another one. Or link. So you get the gist of exactly what, what, what we're getting at here. Okay? I'm going to just choose Law. I'm already in it. Okay, I don't have any tags in here, or so they would they would display. Um, I, I, I mean, I can actually add a couple of tags if need be. Um, but the, the concept is exactly the same as it was in previous builds. Um, you would <coughs> filter based upon your specific tag. Um, what you could do is you can queue your export set. And here's what I'll do. Let me do this real quick. Um, tag, edit tags. Let me go ahead and add a add a couple of them in here. Um, search to we'll do it that way. Okay. Let me go ahead and drop these guys in here. Um, these three, I'll do search one, and then I'll do maybe these a search two. All right. So we have our tags there. Let me go back to export. You're going to see those here. Okay, you see those items here. So if I wanted to go ahead and export those, um, I'm going to go ahead and exclude those. You don't necessarily need to uncheck or to check exclude, just because whatever you have selected as export, that is what's going to be generated in your export set. Okay, so we've queued up the export. It's going directly into the service. You can see this is exactly what it's doing, um, and it's letting you know kind of what's going on. <clears throat> And then the total is going to show up, the expanded count is going to show up uh, for EDA, and then the new is going to show up as well. And then once it's exported and expanded into the law, you're going to see that this would, um, this would uh, export as well. I'm not going to export it directly out to law just because, um, what is going on here? Oh, that's where it's not found. Oh, that's right, because I, I must have moved it. Um, well, that's okay. Um, who is that to? Let me see here. Um, Susan Bailey. Let's see what we got here. And we did have one a quick question, Chad. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. It says when en when encrypted items are reanalyzed, do we need to rerun the searches? It, you. It would be suggested to rerun your searches just because. Um, for some reason, if you happen to um, decrypt those and they do get 
um, indexed, you want to make sure that your searches are up to date. You just want to make sure that everything is correctly done. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this uh, Susan Bailey, but uh, let's see what we got with this one. Okay. But you get the gist of exactly time what's going on with the law export. I, again, I, I apologize. I don't know why Susan Bailey is not um, coming out, but if it happens again, we I have another case that, that, that is successful with it. <clears throat> so it's basically writing the exportables to a specific table uh, within um, EDA, um, uh, within the EDA database. Um, <clears throat> okay, which, um, let's do this one. Okay. You see this would be my native. Let's see, I'm going to hop back into my law. Um, Let's just go ahead and queue the entire data set here. And she's just going to give me everything within that uh, queued data set. And that's going to show me what's going on in here. <clears throat> I apologize. I said that case was not working. Um, I probably made too many changes to that. Uh, remove, unchecked, checked, and removed stuff that I'm probably getting a little fat thing, fast fingered on. <clears throat> so you can see here, um, the total was uh, 70, a little over 7,500. This is the expanded count in EDA. This is the new ones. And new documents, and then it would list your exported as, as well as here. So if you wanted to see these, you can go ahead and show those listed here. Okay. Now I'm going to hop into here. Here's my native. I'm going to go ahead and go to done, and you can see that I've already exported. It's theoretically I already exported this, um, <clears throat> and which I already have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click clear all. Boom. I'm basically going to start over on this on this uh, um, data set here for the export. Um, I am my. I can assign my export number as needed. And if I wanted to see what it truly looked like as far as the alphanumeric, you can allow alphanumeric or you can see the number of attachments if you want. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and label this as ABC001. That sets your uh, export um, number there. You can say, hey, all I want is EDRM, all I want is DAT, or you can do both simultaneously. For your DAT, you can set your delimiters. Uh, you can also enable it for concord concordance native viewer if you want to. You can set, select your specific uh, fields that you want. Um, you can remove them all. You can say, okay, all I want is the CC, the client, whatever else is in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select them all so you kind of see what's in there. Click OK. <clears throat> you can see the number of fields to export. And this is showing me exactly where it's going. Okay. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and change this new, um, change this folder here. And I really just like that. So I will go ahead and all right. So I'll go ahead and put the new path in here. All right, so that's where it's going to go, and it'll create the folder as it needs to. I'm going to export my native as well as my text. I can also include the emails and threads as you could do with um, uh, with the law export as well. So I'm going to click on Start Export. All I'm doing is I'm exporting these 276. Now, if I want to do the entire set, check all of those, or if I just uh, click the Export here, click Start. That's going to go through and start my export. Here's my total. It's going to say if there's anything new in there. Um, I exported set if I have there. All right. So it's preparing two of two. And once it's done, it's going to be all complete. You're going to see that it says exported X number. And it's going to increment and grow as, as it needs to. I'm going to go ahead and close out of some of these folders here. All right. So we'll go ahead and pop out here. You can see it's going to take a little bit of time, but we have, um, uh, I believe, what, what do we say for the benchmarks, Elaine? What was the um, consensus here? What are we saying? Um, 20,000 docs an hour, is that what I um, I get? But we've, we, we've um, somewhat benchmarked it as. We're roughly 
20,000 docs an hour. So, um, but keep in mind that we're, it's going to be all over the board as far as you know, your, your network, the, the documents that you're exporting. Um, you may say 276 here, but it could um, take into effect. It could grow a little larger depending on what you're exporting and that kind of thing. So um, there are a lot of uh, factors involved in what you're, run, what you're um, going to get for speeds. Um, as far as going to law, now you're using law pre-discoveries um, <coughs> EV loader. That's going to get two to three gigs an hour, um, depending on your machine. I can see anywhere on my machine, uh, which, is a, which is a Win 7 64-bit, um, Win 7 64-bit with eight gigs of RAM machine. Uh, I can see anywhere from four to six um, gigs an hour. So it can vary based upon your system specs. So there we are. It's all done. It's 100% complete. It's all good. So if I want to go ahead and just jump to this, this folder, double-click on it, and it takes you directly to that folder. So you don't have to try and browse out to it, you know, find that folder, and all that good stuff. Boom, takes you to it. Here's your DAT file. Um, yep, sure that's fine. Here it is, a lot of garbly gook. Here's your, uh, your uh, field names listed here. You, can imp you would import that directly into Concordance or take it into Concordance EV, Relativity, or what have you. And here's your XML file. Boom. And it'll list what's needed within here as well. And here we are. So you can see that it can go on for as many docs as, your docs as you have in there. And then we've also exported out our natives. Here's our text, and here's the attachment to that one, I would imagine. Okay, so there it is. And that follows the uh, the numbering or the naming convention that we have specifically set for that export. Okay. Now, for any reason you need to come back and say, oh, I need to go ahead and just make a, create a new one, I can create another export based upon different options or different fields, and they will, they will remain in effect each and every time until you delete them. So if I wanted to go ahead and let's say I create this one called, um, just call it Elaine, click Add. Let's say, for instance, oh, I really didn't mean to create this. Click the Delete button. Boom, it's gone. Okay. All right. So that, I believe, um, covers. Um, oh, I take that back. We do have, um, before I hop into EDA Web, are there any questions? Um, let's see. Oh, okay. one came in. Does EDA write the number of the exported doc to a field within EDA? No, it does not. It actually, it, it will store that um, within a database within here called uh, export items. Okay, this gives you an indication of, um, this, I'm just opening this table within SQL. So I don't recommend popping in back here and messing around, but this lets you know that <clears throat> um, here's the ID inventory, was it exported? Um, you can go on forever. So these all say false because um, I have a feeling they were comprised from uh, another export, but you get the gist of it. If I select it, let's see what I got here. It all writes directly to um, a SQL table. Um, we may go down the road of putting it directly within to um, EDA eventually, but right now, um, it is not the case. So you got this one is exported as zero, and one indicates that it has been exported, I believe. Number of expanded count, so on and so forth. Yep, here's your exported number, here's your path, and so on. Okay. And if there were any errors during the exception, or during the export, you, they would display in here, show you the message, the category, and so on and so forth. Okay, so here's EDA Web. Um, we recommend using um, Google Chrome or Firefox for um, the EDA web, um, but you do have that ability to um, use it in IE. Um, I believe it is IE um, 9 or 8. Um, I don't believe 10 has been tested. I believe 10 does work, though. Um, but nonetheless, it, we do recommend Chrome and uh, Firefox just because it's, a, it's faster. Um, there's not a lot of plugins that are needed um, to run. Um, within Chrome itself. Um, there's no there's no plugins um, or um, components that need to be installed 
Um, this is all web-based. Here's my case manager. These are all the cases that I have in here okay, that are available. I'm going to hop into my sales feature demo. <clears throat> and now you'll notice here that they do have a they did have a client listed. What is going on there? Let's log off and log back in. That's, that would make sense. I, you cannot have multiple databases open. So you see that you have a client listed here. Okay, in order for the database, the, the, the case within SQL or within EDA itself, you must have a client assigned to it in order for the on for the EDA web to actually recognize it for a client. So during the administration aspect of it, of creating the case, you have to specify a client to be associated with that specific user. Okay, so we've got multiple different options here. You can create a specific user itself. You can create administrative users. You can create um, different settings for those. You can use Active Directory logins. So anytime, um, if you have a specific login set up for your internal paralegals, your attorneys, and so on, that you want to use that domain for, more power to you. You can do that. Okay, um, you can set up different administrators. Um, here's all my clients in here. So you've got Johnson. Looks like I have two cases listed here. Uh, let's see here. Looks like um, who's who's on this who's on this user here? Who, who has access? Looks like Roxanne Hillwell, one of our sales um, um, individuals has access to this uh, sales feature demo. She can go ahead and log into my machine if she wants to look at the sale, uh, the case, and so on and so forth. Okay. The nice thing here is that you can create multiple, uh, two different types of users, full access or read-only access. The big difference between the two is that read-only is exactly what it says. All they're doing is looking at it. They can't change the filters. They can't add search terms. They can't remove search terms. All they can see is what's been done to that case up to that certain and now full access, of course, you can remove filter, not remove, uncheck filters, reapply filters, you know, um, change search terms, add search terms, and such. I'm going to hop in here, sales feature demo, and this is um, uh, early data analyzer um, web or EDA web. Okay, we have a custodian. You can view the summary of the custodians, what's out there, number of uh, documents in each custodian. Um, looks like the searches are out of date, so if I needed to rerun the searches, I can view those searches. It's going to take me directly to EDA, um, that, that aspect, and I can rerun the searches. So if I want to go ahead and um, re-execute those searches, check them, run the check searches, and you're going to see down here, work status is idle, and you're going to see that it, as soon as it has changed, it will apply, go back to idle versus um, work pending. Boom. And now these are all up to date. I'll uh, showing you the individual search terms over here, and documents in the search term. We've got a lot going on within this uh, uh, initial release of EDA Web. This is, the, this is our first crack at it. Um, so um, feature requests, modifications, opinions are welcome. Okay? You can apply your the stemming, phonic, any of the um, same search options there. Uh, you can tag documents within here. So let's say, for instance, I have Deathstar out here. I want to go ahead and tag this. Um, document. So if I want to go ahead and say tag that one as to export, or let's say I want to go ahead and add an additional one. So if I want to go ahead and export, or if, let's say I want to go ahead and say, you know, Chad Powell or CP as my tag name. Boom. Um, now I want to go ahead and label that one. All those documents that are associated with um, <clears throat> with Death Star, they have been tagged as CP. You can see those here. Okay. Now if I go back into EDA Web, hop over to here, search. Boom. It's automatically tagged. Um, the tagging and uh, the search um, addition of the search terms is quite instantaneous. Um, as far as the filters are concerned, it does take a couple, maybe 30 seconds for those to update. It's not instantaneous. So um, rest assured that, that any of the changes as far as the filters are concerned, they will be applied thereafter um, given um, you've made that selection. So let's say, for instance, uh, I'm going to hop over here to EDA Web, EDA Desktop, File Type Filter, so that's unchecked. I'm going to come into EDA Web. I'm going to check it. Now what it's got to do is it's going to go through, and you just saw there's work pending here, and <clears throat> in a bit it's going to go ahead and update that. There it is. Boom. No, I didn't click that. <laughs> it just happened to be my mouse over that as it, as it changed. So you can see that it does happen relatively quick. 
Um, these are just your search. These are your filters. We've got the same filtering aspect here. Um, the dashboard, you can go ahead and hop into your NIST filter, different filter summaries here. Um, you can define your tags, do your summary of your tags listed here. Okay. Um, I showed you your filters. Searches are pretty much the same. Um, we have these options within here. Um, this is the different layout. So you have the ability to say, okay, I'll, this, this is the predominant you're looking here. Or you can say, okay, the center section is going to be your predominant section you're going to look at. Or, for instance, your, 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 your text section. Or you can auto it. So wherever your mouse is, is where it's going to go ahead and, and put the focus. Okay, I don't like this, so I like this one here. What you can do is you can minimize your search request options over here, and you can bring it back. We do have an, uh, <clears throat> let's see, your filter analysis within here. What's nice about the filter analysis, and this takes a moment just because it's looking to see what file types have been, um, what file types filters have been applied to each of these file types, email center domain, and the, the, the language filters. So uh, what's going to happen here is it's going to give you like a little a tree view or tree map view um, to kind of give you that indication of what has not been decided on. Okay. Um, are there any questions while this loads, Light? There is one that I don't think we've covered. Is there a way to have a cross-reference if you decide to export additional fields at a later time? I think that was towards the EDA desktop. There is no cross-reference for um, if, you've, if you've only exported five fields and then needed, needed to add an additional field. I believe that you would be able to just append to that existing um, DAT file. Uh, it doesn't take long to re-export, um, so if you don't need to include your texture natives, just ex um, ex export the, the, the DAT or EDRM, um, you can certainly do so. I don't think, you know, I've, I honestly have never um, added additional fields as needed. Um, whoever that was, what we can do is I, we can test that out and then get back to you and send you a direct email just to let you know. Okay, so I'm not sure what's going on with that other case, but nonetheless, this here's the new here's the new features case that we were just in. Here's the email sender domain. These are the items that I have not made a decision on. This lets me know that hey, Enron, Enron.com are um, they're pulling up the largest size first, or I can do the count. Either one doesn't matter. You can see that it is real time. It does switch back and forth. So let's say for instance, I want to go ahead and review these documents. I can come through and say, okay, what's going on here? Do I need to? Yeah, these look like I should include them. Boom, include. I made quickly made a decision there, and you can see that I went ahead, and it changes as you progress along with that review. So if you want to go ahead and look up a specific section here, UPS, eh, I don't want to include those. CruceScott.com. Let's take a look. Da -da -da. Come through here. Nope, I don't want to. I want to exclude those. So you can see as you make a decision, the the graphs are being updated real time. I'm going to exclude. Um, you can see that it just increased there. I'm going to exclude these. Let's go with this one as well. So you can see as you even progress in the review and take a look at exactly what you want here. Same goes as your language. Okay, they are labeled as different colors. Um, <clears throat> just because we want to distinguish, okay, this is the file type, and the file looks like the file type filter has um, everything already made the decision upon. But let me go ahead and uncheck a couple here. All right, filter analysis. Okay, here we are. I know it's not a whole lot of difference, but nonetheless, you get the you get the idea. This will be a blue, this will be green, and this will be purple. Um, it has been discussed making each individual section or each individual item or grouping um, a different color. It seems a little bit of an overkill um, as far as this one be a color, this one different color, this one, this one, and so on and so forth. It seems a little overkill, but um, opinions are definitely um, entertained um, as far as that is concerned. So um, you can include the remaining. You can exclude the um, just um, you know group them all in one. Include all of the remaining if you want to. So you can see that we do get a lot of uh, stuff going on here. So after everything's all been done, you, all the analysis, all everything's made a decision upon, you can come through here and pull the user user audit log. What's why is this important? Well,
Well, this gives you a perfect representation of what's been going on in the case, whether that's in the EDA web or within the uh, desktop, desktop application. You can see here, um, policy A is actually my login for the web aspect. This is showing me that I changed the filter, I added a group tag, I, I tagged documents, I executed a search. Um, this individual um, um, looks like this was apparent. This was my login to my local machine. This was all done within the desktop itself. So you can see exactly what's going on directly within a user auto log after the case has been completely reviewed. Okay. Um, are there any questions now? I know I covered a lot of information in an hour, uh, but I want to make sure I'm respectful of everybody's time and not go over um, if, uh, if there are no other questions. Nope, there, there aren't any questions at this time. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back uh, the, our contact information. Um, this is our contact information, but what I would love to do, instead of giving you my boring information, let's do this. Let me bring up um, our sales team information. Um, you know guys don't want to contact me for sales information. You want to contact the important people. So I'm going to go ahead and give you our sales team. Okay? This is our uh, um, sales team, West Coast, pretty much the entire U.S., um, their contact information. So feel free to contact them directly with any additional questions if you have them. Uh, you can actually contact um, that via email, direct phone number, um, so on and so forth. So we'll leave this up for maybe a couple more minutes, but um, if there are no other further questions, um, I thank you very much for uh, the attendance today. And uh, yes, we did record this, um, so I'm, sh I'm sure that uh, marketing will put it up somewhere um, to be downloaded and um, listened and distributed. So again, thank you very much for joining Elaine and myself for the um, Early Data Analyzer, uh, Features and Modifications 1.3 that came out to it about a week and a half ago. Have a great day. Bye now.